Here's how to use Narrative Cosmetics silicone compound, plus also just go and make a fake wound with this awesome product. Let's go and use Narrative Cosmetics silicone modeling compound kit. Now this stuff is awesome. You can make some extremely realistic cuts, wounds, scratches, pretty much anything that you can think of, you can go and make with this. It is such an awesome product and such an awesome thing to go and use. So what you want to do is you want to go and open parts A and parts B separately. You also want to go and use something that is completely and totally different to go and mix this. So I just have a popsicle stick that is split in half. Once you do end up getting any of this material into the other one, so A into B, B into A, it'll go and start to set it and then you won't be able to use this product anymore. After you have one part out, go and put the cap on so you don't accidentally put the wrong cap on the wrong container. Now we're going to go and use a different popsicle stick. Take out the same amount, so it's a 50-50 ratio of what you had for part A. Now you're going to have this for part B. Make sure to go and cap that. We're going to keep these two separate just for a second because you only have 10 minutes after you start mixing it. Now I'm going to add a small amount of this foundation in here. I really don't need much. I just want it to go and match my skin tone and have a good base. Now I'm just going to go and mix this up. You want to mix this up very well. You want to make sure both of the parts are fully mixed. It takes about maybe 30 seconds to a minute to fully mix it. The less you have, the less time that it takes to go and mix. So now that I have this mixed up pretty well, we're going to go and take this and start to go and apply it to the skin. Now again, you only have 10 minutes to go and work this, but after about a minute or two, it does start to go and very lightly set, and that's when you want to go and start to use it. It's a lot easier to go and make these peaks along with also just different raised structures, but what I'm doing is I'm just going and putting this onto a portion of my arm. You will see a little bit later in this video what does happen when you don't use an adhesive base, and I will also be showing a little bit later in this video as well too what it does look like when you do have an adhesive base. This I didn't want to go and put a base down just because I wanted to kind of see how it would go and remove after the fact. But to go and smooth out the sides, you use a metal sculpting tool, you can pull it down. And if you really do want to go and smooth the sides even more or take off some of this extra product, what you do is you use some isopropyl alcohol before it goes and dries. And you can also blend the edges with petroleum jelly. So what I'm doing is just building up the different edges, making sure it's thin at one end, a little bit thicker in the middle, and then thin at the other end, because I want to go and make a fake cut. Now for the center, I'm going to go and dip this metal sculpting tool into some petroleum jelly, and I'm going to go and just very, very slowly guide it through the center to go and create a line. You do want to make sure you put this into petroleum jelly or something along those lines because the silicone compound is going to stick to whatever tool you use if you do not. You will have to maybe brush off some of the silicone compound and you will see that it is just slowly going back into the center. And I am doing this about six minutes into this entire thing setting. And after 10 minutes, again, you can't go and mold it anymore. It does fully set at that time, but as it sets, it's a lot easier to go and shape at least like this and to go and put a line into the center. Now, as this dries and sets, I'm going to go and take a small amount of this adhesive here, which I am using Narrative Cosmetics adhesive, putting down a very small amount here, and then I'm going to go and take more of the silicone compound that I have over here, and I'm going to go and lay it on top of this adhesive. This is going to give it a really great base for it to go and stick to. And if you want to go and wear makeup for multiple hours on end, especially maybe if you're doing something that is for like stage makeup, or maybe you're doing a Halloween look or something, starting off with a base is definitely a great idea because the silicone compound will go and stick to this. Now I'm going to go and smooth the sides. And at this point, it's been about eight minutes since I went and mixed up the product. So everything is starting to dry pretty well. I'm going back to here just before it fully sets and you can definitely see that it is pretty much almost there. It has maybe another minute or two at this point. And I'm just going to go and let everything fully and totally set after that. Now that everything is set, I'm going to go and take off some of the shine from the silicone compound. You can go and do this with some setting powder that is usually matte, or you can do it with some translucent setting powder. I'm using some translucent setting powder, just giving that a nice light brush and it did take off some of that. At the sides where I did not use any of the adhesive as a base, you can see that some of the silicone compound is peeling. This is kind of what I did expect to go and happen. So what I'm going to do is just take some of this adhesive, 
put it onto my finger, and then I'm going to go over the sides of the silicone compound here and try to just at least get some of this to stick down so it doesn't peel anymore. This is a way to go and at least remedy everything just a little bit. If you don't end up putting a base down, this will end up happening over time. The sides will peel as you move around and as you do sweat. Now to go and take off some more of that shine, I'm just going to go and use a little bit of this translucent setting powder again. And I'm just going to go and brush a very small amount on there just to take off some more of the shine. Now to go and cosmetize the inner portion. I am using some alcohol activated makeup and I'm using this aged blood color. I'm going to go and put this into the center of the cut. So after I've activated this, taken my brush and just rolled it around a little bit in there, made sure I got more than enough of this cosmetic. I'm going to go and put it into the center of this fake wound here. Now alcohol activated makeups are usually the way to go with silicone compound based things or maybe on top of latex that you have put down that is a prosthetic just because it does stick to the material pretty well. If it doesn't stick to the material, you can always put down a base of packs and that will really help to go and just give you that extra texture to stick to. Now I'm just using some prime black. The prime black is going to act as a shadow in the inner portion of this fake wound. And you always want to just go and define a very small portion of a shadow, especially when you do have something that you're doing like this, or it's just not going to look as real. Now let's take this makeup one step further. I have these pre-threaded needles, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and sew through the fake cut that I have here over on my arm. You do want to be very, very careful when you do stuff like this. You want to make sure that you don't end up hitting your skin, and because I did cosmetize over this, it is a little bit hard to go and tell exactly where my skin is, so I'm going extremely slow and making sure that I'm getting just the outer portion. Narrative Cosmetic Silicone Compound is really an awesome product, and I'm not just saying that because I had the opportunity to go and test this out. It is just something that is so incredibly different in comparison to any other material that I have used. It acts almost exactly like skin would, which is so cool, and there's just a lot that you can go and do with it. It really is honestly a game changer to the special effects makeup that a person can go and do, and it's a lot of fun to go and use. But what I'm doing is I'm doing a very, very messy baseball stitch. I feel like it just kind of matches this fake wound here. You will see a little bit later as to why I do end up leaving this needle hanging here. I just think it honestly looks really cool and it just really adds to the whole entire makeup. So now let's go to the scar. Now the scar, I'm just going to go and put down a base of this fresh blood coat and I'm only using a very, very, very light layer of this just to go and give it a very small amount of color. Normally when you have maybe an old scar that's raised like this, it might have some discoloration. It might be a little pink, maybe it has a little bit of yellow to it. It all depends on what exactly happened and previous trauma to this area. So I'm just adding a very light layer of base red just to give it a small amount of color. Now I'm going over it with this cream color, which is a yellow or an off pale yellow from the Death palette. And this is just going to give it a small amount more of color along with also just make it look a bit more realistic to kind of what I would want it to look like. And it's going to give it more of a matte tone rather than keep this still semi shiny tone that's here. So I'm just going to go and layer that on there. And now that everything has dried after about three minutes, here's what it looks like. The Narrative Cosmetics Silicone Compound is honestly a lot of fun to go and use. I wouldn't have known anything about this product unless Narrative Cosmetics a while back went and reached out and wanted to do a collaboration, so thank you again, Narrative Cosmetics. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You can find more tutorials over on my profile.